Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm here to do a walkthrough of the El Camino Oracle, Ancestral Wisdom for the Journey, written and illustrated by Savina Espinet. You may be familiar with her work already as she has contributed to a few other decks, Auspicious Symbols for Luck and Healing, Mudras for Awakening the Five Elements, Mudras for Awakening the Energy Body, and the Pride Tarot. If you've been watching my channel for a bit, you'll know that one of these decks, Mudras for Awakening the Five Elements, is always kind of showing up within my videos. This is a deck that I work with a lot, and she is the artist for this deck. So I've already been working with her art, and I love it already. So this deck I saw on Queen of Set's channel when she was covering some of the Latino inspired decks. When she shared it, I had ordered it immediately and I got it just in time to do some of my ancestral work right after Dia de los Muertos. I really have enjoyed working with this deck. And as you know, I don't like to really share a deck until I've had a chance to work with it. So let me just share a little bit about the deck itself. It contains 44 cards. They are this square shape, which has not been a problem for me as far as working with it. It comes all tucked together in this nice little box. It doesn't have notch holes, but US Games, very clever. You did this nice little shape here, so you can easily grab the box and pull it apart. It's a nice sturdy little box, and I do love that everything fits right inside the box. Here's the guidebook. It's 112 pages and it does have full color images on the inside for each and every card. So let me go ahead and explain a little bit about the deck. So she created this deck kind of as a story of telling her own family's experiences that is steeped with Caribbean and Hispanic roots. In the guidebook, she speaks about moving to Florida and trying to fit in to this new world or new area that she's living in and not really being accepted by either one. She states that when she came to Florida, she was trying to assimilate into this new culture, but it was a very emotional journey for her trying to embrace this new culture while still trying to be in touch with who she is and where she came from. That is something that really does affect people. It really is hard because you really don't feel sometimes where you are attached to either one. And that's something that I have experienced on many, many occasions. Again, let me just go ahead and go into a little bit more about this. Now, usually, I don't put the cards back in order once I'm working with the deck. However, with this particular deck, she based it loosely on The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. So for that reason, I did put the deck back in order so that way you could experience the deck one by one, cards one through 44, as she is sharing her story or the story of immigrants. Now this deck is not just for people of a different cultural background. This story can be shared by anybody. Take a look at this deck, see what you think. Here are the backs, and I'll just go ahead and start going one by one through each and every card.
Savina states in her guidebook, each one of us goes on countless journeys of personal growth and development within the longer journey of our lifetime. With that in mind, El Camino Oracle has been crafted as a celebration of self-discovery, ancestry, diversity, and the immigrant values that people of all nationalities inherently bring with them on their journey. We can apply these lessons to daily life and every new challenge. Although the point of view in the deck comes from personal experiences, you do not have to be Latinx or an immigrant to find meaning in the messages. Even those who don't know their biological family can become acquainted with the broader cultural family tree to find their ancestral guides. The principles depicted in this artwork are archetypes that are universal to our human experience and that bind us all to something greater. All of us are travelers, immigrants on this planet for the duration of our stay. The cards are titled in Spanish as well in English, and the title is also used as the key word. However, if you dig into the guidebook, it tells a story about each and every card where you can dive in a little bit deeper. And it also shares both positive and negative sides within the guidebook. So the guidebook itself starts off with this little story about the deck, how she came to create the deck. And then she talks about how to use the deck. She has a one card draw. She has the flag spread, which is a three card draw, the El Camino spread, which is a four card draw. And the El Camino spread is really nice because it's the origin, the path, the obstacle, and the destination. Each card is fully explained with a nice little story that goes along with each one. It also has a section for assimilation as well as a reverse meaning. It's just a very beautifully done book and the way that she tells the stories, it really does bring you into an enlightened sense of being when it comes to understanding the culture. Let me go ahead and show you what I've been pairing this deck up with. Now, as I stated earlier, I've been using this deck for some ancestral work and it has worked out beautifully. However, I will say that even just using this deck outside of ancestral work, just for daily guidance, it works beautifully. If you watched my channel and you saw my monthly wrap up or some of the, um, another recent video, which is all about pairing decks up, uh, I've been using it a lot with the Gentle Tarot, and I love that the Gentle Tarot has these big, beautiful borders, or not big, beautiful borders, but borders, and they are colored, and it just seems like these two work so well together as far as aesthetics are concerned and the overall messages. I really have not tried pairing the El Camino Oracle up with too many other decks within my collection because I kind of got stuck on these two. These two just work so beautifully together. The way that the stories weave into one another has just been a wonderful experience. So that is the Gentle Tarot along with the El Camino Oracle. I'm sure that there are other decks that would pair up very nicely with it. I just have not tried them to be honest because that worked so well, I didn't really need to take it any further than that. So let me go ahead and show you the cardstock. This is a US Games deck, so the cardstock is nice. It really does work well. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. It is a square deck, but you can easily shuffle it. If you do overhand shuffling, you can take it to overhand, but if you do a riffle shuffle, I think that you can get in a decent riffle shuffle, but you know, you're talking to me here, so I don't really riffle shuffle all that well. But as you can see, I was able to go ahead and riffle it in. I'm sure if you bridge it as well, you could probably manage. I'm really not sure because when I try to bridge, it is a little bit of a mess, but I really do enjoy this deck. I enjoy the stories. I enjoy the concept of the deck. 
I've enjoyed working with it during this time. And just as a daily guidance, when I'm looking into my Mayan astrology and I'm pulling up any days that really do focus on that ancestral wisdom, this is kind of one that I'm kind of leading to lately because it really does tie in to what I'm familiar with, but that does not need to be the case. You can work with this deck on any other level. Just finding these experiences is something that we all have. The language, pride, community, father, all of these are something that concepts that we are all very familiar with. These whole ideas, it doesn't matter where you come from. Just a beautiful, beautiful deck. So let me go ahead and read one of the meanings. Number 29, muerte, death. Death appears frequently in Latinx culture. The most popular instance being the Mexican Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead holiday, when family members cook meals and decorate altars and cemeteries to honor their deceased. The Colombian legend of La Llorona, the weeping woman, is about a ghost who walks in the streets crying in perpetuity of her dead children, and the story has even been made into a horror movie. And during the Colombian carnival, Dancers reenact a battle between life and death in a dance called La Danza de Garabato, in which a man battles the Green Reaper. Death is ever present. It marks the end, but also an opportunity for a new beginning. We can't escape the inevitable of it, so why not embrace it and find ways to learn and accept it as part of life? Assimilation. I accept that this ending is a part of life, not a punishment. How can you acknowledge the cycle of life and mark an ending in a relationship, job, or phase of life? The reverse meaning. What are you keeping alive that might be time to let die? As you can see, this deck really is relevant. It doesn't matter where you come from or what your history entails. There is something to be learned in this deck by everyone. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at this beautiful deck with me. From my heart to yours, I will see you later.